As a church leader, you've undoubtedly realized that church-sponsored workshops do not address marketing or publicity. Pastors also know that seminary courses and continuing education classes don't even acknowledge the existence of marketing or publicity. In today's culture, promotions, marketing communications, publicity, or whatever you want to call it, is an absolute necessity. You have to communicate effectively with your faith community as well as your local community to survive and to thrive. Hi, my name is Dave Schattinger. I'm a locally licensed part-time pastor serving two churches in rural Missouri. When I started on my pastoral journey, I had filled the pulpit a few times over the previous couple of years, and I was also bivocational. I had a full-time job in addition to my pastoring and preaching duties. I was excited to serve for most of my adult life. I had worshiped in large, big city churches. And just from my own experience, I knew that communications was a very important part of this new adventure. Like many of you, when I looked around my church community, the lack of ways to communicate with my congregation was painfully obvious. Out here in the rolling prairie where my churches are located, there is no local TV coverage, no daily newspaper, and the few radio stations are far away and focused on the bigger cities and towns. The only means of promotional communication at the entire south end of the county is, well, wait for it, the 12 by 18 inch bulletin board in the convenience gas station on the other side of the river in the next county. After accepting my first appointment, I buttonholed every district and state conference leader I could find and asked to be put in touch with any rural church leaders who were doing what we all saw celebrated at annual conference. You know what I'm talking about, a vibrant congregation with active youth groups, scores of talented musicians, along with multiple outreach programs. I knew there were a lot of rural churches in Missouri. There are only 16 rural Methodist churches in my home county. So I figured there had to be at least one somewhere in the state whose efforts were grabbing people's attention, encouraging participation, and resulting in some level of congregational success. After two years of pestering, I finally was directed to a church on the opposite side of the state who had recently received a, an award for their communication efforts and impressive results. That pastor graciously arranged a meeting for me with his church leadership. I learned a couple of interesting things from them, not the least of which was that their supposedly rural church was located only five miles outside a large town. Only five miles. My parishioners drive over four times that far just to get groceries. That particular congregation attracted much of their growing membership from the town's suburbs. Nevertheless, the meeting wasn't a complete waste of time because they told me about several PR activities that really helped communicate with their congregation and that honestly helped the church connect with a local community. The same year that church received their award at the annual conference, the bishop commented that part-time pastors now made up a majority of the pastorate in Missouri. I'm guessing a similar situation exists in other denominations across the country. So as I attended conference workshops and talked to my colleagues, I realized there are potentially thousands of pastors with no working knowledge about promotions, marketing, communications, public relations, or publicity. They didn't study these topics in school, and they probably never had a job that showed them what effective promotions honestly look like, or how to implement any of the marketing tools or PR techniques at their disposal. Consequently, outside the relative safety and comfort of the sanctuary and the pulpit, most pastors and church leaders are not equipped to address the promotional needs of their church, especially when it comes to reaching the local community. Let me pile on to the reality of this unfortunate situation. In his book about Christian leadership called Canoeing the Mountains, Todd Bolsinger from Fuller Theological Seminary shows a frustration expressed by many pastors, specifically 
their seminary training did not prepare them for the demands of church leadership in the 21st century. All of this made me realize there's a gaping hole in seminary education when it comes to communicating with your congregation beyond the worship service, and more specifically, promoting what you offer to the community outside the walls of your church. Okay, so at this point, I need to make a full disclosure. Prior to becoming a part-time pastor, I spent nearly 30 years teaching public relations courses and marketing communications classes. Plus, during that time, I also worked full-time in corporate marketing departments, advertising agencies, and not-for-profit fundraising jobs. In my opinion, church marketing and publicity is honestly much more than having the church secretary put an announcement in the Sunday Bulletin or having a volunteer post something on the church's Facebook page and then brewing a pot of coffee right before the event starts. Given my background, you can understand why I would think it's unfortunate that any type of promotions is not mentioned in any religious educational setting. I also think it's sad because the Bible chronicles the adventures of one of the first and one of the most wildly successful PR experts in recorded history. The Apostle Paul effectively used a variety of PR techniques to deliver his message to specifically targeted audiences. You know, the faithful at Corinth, Gallatin, Ephesus, Philippi, Colossus, and Thessalonica, just to name a couple of his target audiences, I mean congregations. On top of that, because every one of those early churches contained a uniquely different group of individuals, each in a different geographic area with different issues, Paul adjusted his message to their interests and needs, which is a legitimate PR technique. I never heard that from my seminary instructors, and you probably didn't either. By any measure, Paul was quite successful in promoting his key concept, the gospel message of salvation through Jesus Christ. And Paul didn't even own a laptop, a cell phone, an inkjet printer, a copy machine, nor did he have access to a stack of professionally screen-printed yard signs, a Facebook page, or even reliable mail delivery. My point here is simply this. If Paul accomplished great things using the rudimentary communication tools of the first century, just think what pastors and church volunteers could accomplish if they knew how to effectively use all the tools and toys we have at our disposal today. At the same time, have you ever noticed what happens at a meeting when the idea of public relations or marketing is mentioned? Many people react as if just saying the word is some type of magical incantation that will miraculously solve every problem. You know, like, hallelujah, marketing! Or they might view it as some kind of distasteful but necessary evil. Something like, ew, public relations? Either way, most people think they know what promotions are all about because they've seen actors portray PR and marketing folks as everything from scam artists and hucksters to confidence men, spin doctors, and outright thieves. Plus, there's always someone who knows where to buy promotional pens or t-shirts. I have to honestly tell you that effective marketing and publicity actually involves a whole lot more than a giveaway item with a slogan printed on it. This type of response always reminds me of the comedy bit where a guy steps out of the crowd and says, Sure, I know how to fly a plane. I watched Top Gun six times. To communicate effectively, you must understand who your target audience is. You have to honestly and courageously review and understand the current public image and reputation of your church and congregation. You also need to recognize what resources exist within your organization to support and carry out your efforts. Ultimately, your promotional message must honestly involve some deliberate thought to be able to describe, promote, and share an interesting, attractive, and engaging purpose for your event, activity, or program. Plus, your efforts must involve strategic research, planning, writing, production, implementation, and follow-up. All of this is why I've put these materials together and why I wrote my book, promotions in a PR wilderness, and why the free church marketing and publicity webinar was created 
along with the online church marketing and publicity course. If you'd like to start filling in that enormous informational gap, please join me on this journey. Click on the link for the free church marketing and publicity webinar. If you want even more, then please sign up for the church marketing and publicity online course. Also, if you would do me a favor and share the link to this trailer with your fellow pastors, maybe you even share it with your church leaders. If you want to see what topics I'm going to cover in the online course, there's a list on my Facebook page as well as the online course website. If you want to skip ahead and see what I have to say on the topics in the course, you can go to the course website, my Facebook page, or Amazon.com and order promotions in a PR wilderness. Thanks for listening, and I hope to see you in the church marketing and publicity webinar, as well as the online course.